Have you ever had like $7,000 in your pocket just like burning a hole? You're like, I gotta just spend this $7,000. Give it to charity. Could buy somebody a full size custom tr tricycle. Why not just buy a guitar? Guitar Stuff with John! Welcome to another Guitar Stuff with John. I be John. Love you guys, and it's glad to have you back here with me on the channel. It is Wild Haired Tuesday. That's just the thing I made up, but t tough. If you watch this channel, try to, wear, try to watch it with your hair all messed up. Boy, I'm excited about this. I, I have not been able to do this, really, this entire channel. And the, the history of the channel, I mean. Uh, I did one comparison early on uh, that approaches this one, but nothing like this. This, this, is, this is a first for the channel. Um, I'm going to compare uh, two guitars, two dreadnoughts, uh, that in my opinion, uh, you, you're not going to be able to find any better guitars than these two guitars. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say much. I'm going to save my comments till the end. I'm going to get right into the comparison. I'm going to show you the contenders and then I'm going to play them for you. All I'm going to say about this is th this is as always 100% above board this microphone is about 18 inches away from me. It's an Aston Origin uh, condenser mic, wide, uh, uh, large uh, diaphragm condenser. It has flat response. There's no compression. There's no effects. There's no nothing on this. What you hear is what you hear. And if you really want to hear it clearly, wear a set of headphones um, or watch it through your TV. Or if you have a good set of speakers on your computer, you'll be able to get all the bottom end out of this. And that's it. There's the rules. So number one contender this is the Boucher the Boucher BG 52 this is the best dreadnought guitar that I have ever played in my entire life and I say that wholeheartedly there's nothing I have ever touched that compared to this guitar it has a custom one and three quarter inch nut on it made just for me it's, it's standard rosewood back and sides, bound in Koa, I believe, and a torrified Adirondack, Adirondack 4 plus Adirondack uh, spruce top. And it is the best guitar, best dreadnought guitar I've ever played, period. Our, our challenger, this is the exciting part. Our challenger is the D41 Martin Dreadnought. This guitar, it was provided to me by an anonymous donor, and I'm incredibly proud that, that, that this happened because, in my opinion, this is one of the best, if not the best, uh, design of a dreadnought in the history of a guitar. I love this design. Martin absolutely killed it with this. Again, Rosewood back and sides. I'm not sure what type of Sitka or uh, spruce they use, if it's Adirondack or Engelman or what they use, but in the in the long in the long and short of things, the species of a top, unless uh, if it's if it's all spruce, doesn't really matter that much. It it it's the builder that des that decides whether the top is going to be utilized correctly or not, and Martin definitely does that. It has the beautiful abalone everywhere. The fret markers, the logo that just I just love that. This this is my dream. One of my this is my dream guitar. If I had a if I if could I'd have a 45. But the 40 only difference with the 45 is the abalone is on every seam of the guitar. And that's not necessary. So this is like the best of all worlds. You have this incredible design, and the amount of workmanship that goes into 
the 40 series of Martins. This particular 41 is unbelievable. This is why Martins are Martins, is this guitar. I've played other 41s and 45s and 40 series and 30 series that I wouldn't pay a dime for. But this one, this one is what I'm talking about. When I talk about the legacy of Martin guitars, this is the type, this is the instrument that I'm talking about, what they're capable of doing. Okay? So, I'm going to play the two guitars. We're going to splice things together. And uh, let's just see what we got here. style. folks um god what do you say <laughs> so i don't know how you feel about what you just saw uh what i can tell you is this in in the room i hope it's being translated to you accurately when you're has your hearing i know it's going to be there's some compression and there's things that happen with youtube and blah 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 but in the room there's there's no comparison between these two guitars 
And I hate to say that, but there isn't. There's a certain... Okay, let me rephrase that. There's a comparison between them, but it's not a level playing field. Um, the Boucher is, is an absolute cannon. Cannon. It's easily two and a half times louder than the Martin. And it has a sustain and a liveliness on the neck. That's, it's immeasurable. It is immeasurable. Uh, it's just, it's just the best dreadnought guitar I've ever played in my life. And so it's all, it's not actually fair to compare it to any guitar really. But when you listen to the Martin, the Martin is much quieter and believe me, this is a really nice D41. There's nothing wrong with this guitar. You can hear the thinness of it up there though, right? It's brilliant, this guitar, but it just in it just can't really be compared to, to the Boucher. Now, do I love this this guitar? Absolutely, I love this guitar. This is my dream Martin, and I have it, and I'm very lucky to have received it. This is a guitar that would if if I had bought this guitar, there's no way I would ever sell it unless it falls apart, which I don't think it's going to because it's already, I believe, four years old possibly now, and it's mint, pristine condition. It's just got that THE Martin sound, right? And there's nothing in the world that can replace it. Nothing. There's no other guitar that sounds like a shit-hot Martin. Nothing. There's nothing in the world that sounds like it. And so the question then becomes, do we want to pay the difference for that sound, right? Many of us do. And if, if I had money to, to burn, there's no question I would buy this guitar, even though it's $1,400 more expensive than this one. This guitar here, the Boucher, is $5,400 before tax. So there's a 15% tax on it. This one is $6,800 before tax, okay? Now, I'll mind you again, these are Canadian prices and Canadian currency, but it's all relative. You go into the States, the numbers are the same. You know, there's, it's, it doesn't make any difference. People, the cost of living is lower there. Their money is worth more. It's still a lot of money to anybody in any country. And if you're if you're buying the guitars outside of North America, the prices are even higher because of import taxes and transport and all that other stuff. So the question then becomes, what do you really want? What do you really want when you buy a guitar? Do you want the best guitar in the room? Or do you want the guitar that makes you feel special because of the name on the headstock, right? Or, or in my case, it makes me nostalgic, this. This guitar, when I hold it and play it, it just feels like an old friend to me. It, feel, it feels like something I've, I've known my whole life, looking at this headstock and seeing that name going down the middle and thinking, man, I wish I had one of those, right? But... The Rocket, as I call her, Boucher uh, BG-52, like, 
there's just nothing like it ever. I've never heard anything like this guitar. So, in my opinion, what we've done here today is is look at the two of the best guitars in the world right now. This one, just for sheer punching power and ability and tone and sustain and an intonation and also, you know, the family style um, uh, service you get from this company. It's a small company. It's Canadian, blah, 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 right? Like that's important. Those things are important. So we've seen this guitar and here we see, in my opinion, the, 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 the highest echelon of what Martin's capable of doing in a production line, right? This D41 is some of their best work, some of their best work. Is it worth $1,400 more than a guitar that can sort of kind of eat it, right? Eat, eat it alive. That's up for discussion. It really is. And if you love Martins, I love you, and I love Martins myself, and that's why I'm happy I have this guitar. But I'm also happy to show you that the name on the headstock doesn't mean as much as you might think except in your heart this this guitar makes my my heart big when i play it this guitar just blows my mind it just boggles my mind right and i've and i've seen lots of other guitars like this this boucher i have gallagher's in this room i have i have the the new epiphone inspired by gibson guitars that are just unbelievable guitars for the money I have any number of things in this room that I can pull out and go, wow, the, the Yaris, the Yamahas. Every one of them is a different beast, a different price point, a different emotional content, right? And that is what guitar playing is actually all about. Does this make your heart big? Does it make you want to play the guitar every day? Even though it's $1,400 more than this one and might not sound as good or the same or whatever you want to call it does, it, does it do that for you? Does it get the job done? And if you're like me and just want, you know, if I had to choose between, now i got to be honest, if I walked to a music store and I had $7,500 or $7,000 and these two guitars were sitting there, these ones exactly, I would buy the Boucher every single time. And the only reason is, well, there's many reasons, but the financial reason is the main reason. I would play this, I would see how far it sits above this and go, I want the Martin. I want the Martin because it's a Martin, but I can't spend that kind of money when this guitar is just eating it alive. So... There you go. It's and I don't. This video will be. I know this will be contra, controversial. People will say all kinds of things. Look, I, I'm only. I only care about telling the truth. That's it. And I'm telling you that this guitar is awesome and this guitar is awesome, but the price difference is prohibitive. And I wish it wasn't. I wish Martin. Would, would look at how well-loved and influential they really are. They got nothing to prove. And they're, they, don't get, they don't have any financial issues. They're building like a million guitars a year. They should come back to getting the prices of these premier instruments down where the great boutique builders are. That's, that's what they should do. Because so if, if they did... I would be choosing these all the time. I'd have three or four Martins if I could afford them. Because they go so well with every other guitar I got. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you had two of these guitars in a record, if you had this two guitar in a recording session, you'd want for nothing. Both of these guitars do everything you need from fingerstyle to rhythm to Celtic to bluegrass to country to rock. These two guitars can handle anything. Anything just can't afford one of them really so 
a special thanks to my benefactor who who knew I wanted this guitar and and got it into my hands and a special thank you to Robin Boucher who like I, I don't know if you watch this channel you know that he's my he's my guitar god he's the guy that builds the best guitars I've ever played so um there you go this is uh this has been it Stay tuned. There'll be more reviews. I got a review coming up pretty soon uh, for my Doc Watson Gallagher, which is going to be awesome. That guitar kills. Uh, I've got more Epiphones on the way. I've got a new Recording King on the way. The Justin Towns Earl uh, signature model is on its way here. I'll be reviewing that. It's a fun little guitar. And there we go. Another guitar stuff with John. A pair of instruments, boys, that really will turn your head. And, uh, I could there's no way I could you know not recommend either one of them just 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 be careful you know when you're when you're buying your Martin make sure you get a good de get a good deal and tr try to make the best deal you can and make sure it's good and sound before you leave the store as you would with any guitar any production guitar that's being made in a factory doesn't matter who, who what the name is every guitar has its problems sometimes and you got to be careful but I'm telling you what uh, C.F. Martin blew this one right out of the park. This is one of the nicest D41s I've ever played in my entire life, and uh, it'll be in my it'll be in my collection forever. So there you go. I'm very happy to be here with you. I love you, and I just want you to play good guitars all the time, and learn and practice and learn and practice and play, and be happy. That's the whole point of us being here. All right. I'm J.P. Cormier. Thanks for being with me here on Guitar Stuff with John. Take care. Love you.